Hello, hello, and welcome back on my personal journey in the Dr. Joe Meditations. If you haven't watched the previous videos, you may want to go back to the day one because I basically share my, my experiences in the meditations at these Dr. Joe events. I do not teach any of this work. If you want to learn more about him, you need to go directly to him. So here we go. This is Marco Island in September 2023. This was my diary. And I did the week long, seven days of his event. Then he had two days off, and then we started the AFU, which is the advanced follow up. And this is the meditation number one on the first day of the AFU. And we started with Botech, Blessing of the Energy Centers. This felt so loving and fun. It was a calming, kind energy that surrounded each energy center. We started with the first energy center, turning into and then tuning into the heart. Loving it, feeling it, being kind to it, giving it all my love, energy, and attention. Feeling into each center one at a time, loving each one, one by one. And if I got distracted, I was reminding myself what I was doing and why. Blessing each energy center to create coherent patterns within me. Every time it hit the heart, the love was immense. From one all the way up to the eighth center, opening the, to love. We then lie down to relax, but my heart kept feeling loads of love in my heart. At one point, I felt into my, my friends, I don't like to say names, but this one specific friend's heart. And I started shaking and feeling immense love. I loved her so much in that moment. I know I love her, but in that moment, I could really feel that love. I remembered it was her birthday, the moment I felt the love. So as soon as I opened my eyes for this meditation, I ran to hug her and wish her a happy birthday. How fun, like in the meditation, I was being reminded it was a birthday. I then had lunch with a lovely group of new friends. I want to remember the name of the lady I was speaking to about my life. What stuck is her sharing something happening to her son in her sleep that I could see is concerning her. She was really hurt by how he was unwell. I saw her about to tear up when I shared my relationship with my recurring nightmares and dreams. It was a sign and remember that my story can help others, so I shared it with her. Some things I can't always read. <laughs> I then wanted to go get my bathing suit from my room, but instead of going to the short way, I wanted to put my feet in the sand. So I ran down to the beach and I saw a guy. I remember that my friend had mentioned telling me an interesting story about him. So instead of dashing off, I went up to him to say hello. Um, I have to meet you. I want to hear your story. Basically, what I do with people when I really want to meet them, I just go into their face and be like, Hi, I'm Lisa. Out of your friend. <laughs> we laughed and walked to the beach, and on the way I heard a drop but kept walking, walking away. A few steps later, I said I thought it was my earring that dropped. Sure enough, I touched my ear and my earring was gone. I walked those six steps back and looked at the I looked at a leaf and I felt the need to pick it up. The moment I picked up that leaf, sure enough, right under it, it was my earring. I laugh when I think of these. Um, moments and how clever our intuition truly is. This new friend, this guy I was talking to, shared his beautiful story of love, source, and feeling his full energy and emphasized some points that I'd like to remember. Keep it simple. Love source, love yourself, and love everybody, and just trust. Trust was the most important one for me. As the last few days, the doubt that everyone but me could heal started creeping in again. Speaking to, to him was a gift, a reminder. That was the second gift from the universe in just the first day. As I was about to be a Healy at this event, a sign from the universe not to give up. Oh yes, I was a Healy at the AFU, and I was gifted this card that I always keep with me everywhere I go. It's time to fall in love with life. They showed up, asked me to go in the back room and they handed me this card, which I absolutely love and carry with me everywhere I go. So that was already an amazing start to my AFU. The second meditation at 11.30 a.m. was the kaleidoscope lying down. It was two to two and a half hours of meditation using the kaleidoscope. It started with the eyes closed, tuning into the heart. 
Then we love to each center one by one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to the eighth. One by one, loving each, each center. When we open our eyes, we tune into the kaleidoscope in and out of beautiful patterns of amazing colors. We open our eyes three times with three different images superimposed. The first image was energy moving up into the brain. The second main image was energy moving up from the first to the fourth and the sixth center in all directions. And the third image was the brain with the kaleidoscope coming from the center. I seem to easily go into a trance, especially with Dr. Joe's work. Apparently I'm pretty open to suggestibility. Lots of beautiful energy moving in and through me. Just a lot of energy moving, moving the body. I felt the pressure of a hand pushing down on my sternum again, just like I did in the week long. So basically a hand, felt like it was here and pushing up into the sternum. It is the third or fourth meditation this happens to me. It feels like a human hand actually pressing. Once we lie down, I felt a lot of love and a lot of body shakes. And then I stopped writing because I probably fell asleep. That's what happens when I write my journals at the end of the day. Um, and finally, the last meditation of, the, I guess it's the first, second day. Because the first day, we don't meditate. We just have a big party where we dress up like our future selves. I'll share some photos of it because it was beautiful. I dressed up as the sunshine, reflecting everyone's inner light by wearing a mirror of the sun. So anytime people would show up, I'd just show them the mirror. I'll make sure to cut and paste into this video some of those photos. This was really fun. So. So the final meditation of the second day, the first second day, whatever you want to call it, was a coherent healing. We had 15 minutes break before our coherent healing. We were asked not to leave the break, the break room unless urgent, but I felt that running to my room and think, um, to the other side of the hotel to pick up my ammonite necklace was urgent. I don't know why, I really wanted into the room with me for coherent healing. With all the studies of twins sharing energy, even when it's far apart, I felt if I brought that ammonite into the room, the person with the other half would receive healing energy their, their way as well, because the room would be filled with this frequency of healing energy. I hope this person feels all the love from our healing session, because it was really important to me to have it there. Ammonite is an ancient fossil it has been in existence for millions of years. It promotes prophetic dreams and is believed to hold an ancient knowledge of the earth. Somehow, I hope, given its ancient property, it has, still has this intelligence to transfer all the love to this other person. Now back to me. <laughs> the healing was amazing. Before the healers even entered, I felt fully whole and healed. Like, why was I even there? Before healers enter, I felt like a knife pressing into my sacrum in a quick 30 second way where it was just like dashed. Once the healers started entering, my heart felt ready and open to receive. I have felt a hand pressing on my sternum up towards the heart once again. It's not the first time I felt it in under meditation, but this time I felt I was being cut down the center and then the ribcage was being pulled away open. The session was beautiful and the music was amazing, especially the one with a hang drum and a female vocal saying love. I experienced a whole lot of love in my heart, energy vibrating through me, loving me, shaking me, flipping me around into weird postures and a few screams here and there as well from the surprise of the energy rising up. Most were from the surprise and the intensity of the energy, whilst a few were from the pain. I had a beautiful visions of divine light pouring into me. At one point, I was sinking into the breath with them all, them all referring to the people in my cage that were my healers. It ended with a beautiful calming trap. So grateful, so calming. However, once I opened my eyes, the intensity rose up again because the first person I crossed my eyes with was Tamara, and I will say her name who was my roomie in the Niagara Falls Dr. Joe Week Long in September 2022. 
I didn't know her before and some friends put us together to share a room. I love her so much. I feel so, so grateful. The love from everyone in that room I had just received was so intense and then seeing Tamara and all the energy got me crying hysterically. My body, start, my body started spasming again and had one of the people who work there, we call them the green hats, come try and calm me down, telling me to breathe and to relax. And I was holding tight to the hand of the people, hands of the people around me because I just couldn't stop the shakes. It was such a beautiful feeling. So this guy came running, he was afraid that I was uh, not okay, but I was really, really okay. It was too much okay that I was expressing. So yeah, that first healing meditation was just pure magic. And finding her, this woman that I connected to a year ago, I knew this story, she knew mine. She didn't know I was lying down, because you go in and your eyes are closed. And I didn't know she was there. So when we both saw each other, the tears of joy, of love, of everything, we just couldn't stop hugging and trying to express to the other people in the cage who couldn't understand why we were like, mental. <laughs> it's like, ah, the words were coming out, but it was beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a stay. So I thought I was done, but I forgot that in the second day of the AFU, we actually did five meditations. It wasn't just three as we usually do. So at 6 p.m. after the healing, we did a walking meditation number 10, heart and brain coherence. Going to the beach straight after the healing was beautiful, and I was feeling so much love still in my heart. We started with our eyes closed, tuned into the heart, and then the brain, and eventually joining the two together. This walking meditation had a kind and calming energy to it. I guess I was still very high from the healing. The final lying down in the, on the beach was the best part. It was beautiful to drift away in loving thoughts. It was all about the walking as our future self, reprogramming the mind into who we truly want to be. And I just love, love, love. That was our walking meditation. And then finally, our last meditation was at 10 p.m. from our rooms, and it's going to sleep meditation. So after a few IT issues, which is normal, I guess, uh, we started about 15 minutes late this uh, sleep meditation where Dr. Joe from his room tunes into our TVs in our hotel rooms and guides us through the meditation. It's the coolest thing ever. We started seated, and I felt like he put us straight into a trance, straight away. We reviewed the day in this meditation, but that is about as much as I, I can remember. Because we then lie down and did a new type of breath that he taught us, where we inhale into the belly, another inhale into the chest, hold, and then exhale. We must have done over 50 sets of this, but I didn't want to give up, so I kept going and going. I started having trouble breathing due to the sore throat and congestion, because of how high the air conditioning in the hotel has been, um, especially because I did like to run in from the beach all wet and then hit by this strong AC. I struggled with the breathing, but I stuck with it. And then when we released the breath, I was so high that I passed out. I remember this because I did wake up in the middle of the night around 2 or 3 a.m. to use the restroom. And I was like, as if I was stoned, I was holding onto the walls, trying to get to the bathroom, the whole room was spinning, and I could still see all these kaleidoscopes in my head going and going. I was like in another dimension. And then I went to bed and woke up again the next morning. I was still very, very, um, how would you say it? Excited? Hi? <laughs> it was a great way to fall asleep. I wish I could do it every night. And I think that that is the final meditation of the first slash second day. Ciao, ciao.